Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. And join me in joining this week Andy Parsons, David Mitchell, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and all the way from America, Jimmy Tingle. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of some cattle enjoying the British countryside in happier times. <laughs> but what does F-A-M-B stand for? Is it Farmers Assemble Massive Barbecues? <laughs> <laughs> Farmers are miserable bastards. <laughs> Is it fantastic? <laughs> a million burgers. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually to do with their earrings. It's actually Frisians admire Mildred's bling. <laughs> Farm animals must burn. <laughs> At the, point, at the point of seeing you two literally minded with somebody like Tim with the answer actually isn't. Is and here's a clue. FAM probably stands oh, no. for foot and mouth. Foot and mouth back. Absolutely oh, right. Well done, Hugh. Be... Congratulations. <laughs> there you go. Very good. The answer I was looking for was foot and mouth back. The disease was diagnosed in cattle at farms in Surrey and is the first outbreak since the epidemic of 2001 that cost the country an estimated eight billion pounds. The great thing about this is that the animals are being killed humanely. Yep. I mean, what happens is they're led up a 50-foot high pile <laughs> of their own relatives. <laughs> and then a man in a hockey mask jumps out with a claw hammer <laughs> and the whole thing's over in six or seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> If you're, going to, if you're going to kill tens of thousands of cows, you're going to start getting creative, aren't you? Yeah. Two cows with one bolt, <laughs> one over the shoulder with the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> do, you think, do you think people are doing gang things? They're doing like, yeah, I got your cow, yeah. <laughs> there is only one person who's ever actually caught foot and mouth in this country. In right. 1966, right. you'd feel a bit of a loser if you're the only one ever. You know, everybody else enjoying the World Cup victory, yeah, yeah. and there's you going... <laughs> <laughs> They're dealing with it. There's a, I read a quote from the chief veterinary officer that said, uh, it is important that no animals move in Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be a bit more specific about that. <laughs> Just yeah, my dog has been glued to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> How quickly did Gordon Brown come back off holiday? He was going, oh, yes, I'm loving it. I'm looking forward to Dorset. Four hours later, oh, there's a small crisis in the farming community. I'm out of there. Monkey world shit, and I'm not looking after my kids anymore. <laughs> it is incredible. It's just, just I... for your first month in charge, uh, it's like something out of... It's like the plagues or something. He gets fire in Glasgow Airport, water. He's onto pestilence at the moment. <laughs> at some stage, he has to appear in a technical dream coach uh, <laughs> and somewhere lead everyone from the country yeah. to, to the promised he's land. Play, he's got a plague of frogs coming when England play France at Twickenham. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Apart from cows, brother, who is the outbreak affected? Farmers. Yes. <laughs> the, the lab, which... Legally, we have to say there seems to be some doubt if they caused this or not, but people are going, is it the lab that was working on this virus just down the road? <laughs> <laughs> well, the... oh, my, my child's caught chicken pox. Where could that have come from? Well, we do live next door to Gary Chickenpock, the living chicken <laughs> pox. <laughs> Perhaps he's involved in some capacity. <laughs> You're right. Legally, we can't say the questions are being asked. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, that, but it, is, it is difficult legal they, ground to point the finger at Mary Al or the IAF. They produce <laughs> the vaccine for foot and mouth, which no-one uses, because a, a lot of cows won't take it because they've heard that it causes autism. <laughs> <laughs> And they want, <laughs> and they want to be. They want to go. Mmm. They don't want to go. I'm an excellent driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is an awkward situation to be in. To be a, a lab that may have released the uh, foot and mouth um, in, into the wild, and yet also be the lab that creates the vaccine. At what point during the discussing the security do you just drop in? Oh, by the way, we do actually also sell a vaccine to this particular <laughs> place. If you know anyone <coughs> who'd like to buy some. Uh... It's like the people who run intensive care being the same people who own Weatherspoons. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever way it is, it's a, I mean, you know, either it's a nasty accident or it's an excellent business plan. <laughs> and either way, I think we need to respect these people. <laughs> because, you know, either it's an accident, in which case, bad luck, or... They, you know, are trying to infect us with diseases only they have the cure to. And 
Those are people we should respect. <laughs> I feel awful about the fact that it's an American company. I mean, this disease is very bad, but um, as an American, I just say we've been suffering for the last six years from foot in mouth disease. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, though, all companies are American companies, aren't they? Yeah. Really? <laughs> e everything <laughs> turns out, oh, Mrs. So and so's prawns from, you know, Gloucestershire. Oh, no, no, it's all owned by Spazacom. <laughs> <laughs> That was, a, that was under the cuff. That was the best you could come up with for it. You couldn't have called them Globodex or something like that. Like some Globodex is much better than Spazacom. Spazacom is it? The news is all over the financial pages. That Spazacom is changing its name to, to the more attractive sounding Globodex. Do you know, but there are lots of aspects of this I don't understand. There is apparently a death for a hotline. Did you read that? There is, yeah. How, how many cows are going to be able to dial? <laughs> I seem to develop the cold. Uh, Especially if they can't way. move. Uh, Just yeah. be right here with cow. They try to make me go to rehab. <laughs> 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 One thing that is affecting is, is that uh, country shows are now being shut down. Oh, no, no yeah. country shows. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of boring bastard goes to a country show anyway? <laughs> oh, we're only here because the Dust Museum wasn't open. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, to be fair to the people, they were an agricultural. That the show did go on, but without any animals at it. There was a show on. No, no, no. There was, and there was a there was a quote yeah. from the guy who said, uh, "It's like going to a lap dance yeah. club when there are no dancers there." <laughs> How creepy is that uh, as a relationship to have with cattle? Just, a, just a pig on a pole going, ah! <laughs> push it! Push the wheel, dude! Do you know what the Daily Mail's headline was? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. 30 miles shadow of fear. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Observer's headline, uh, foot and mouth may have been caused by science lab. Not one of your ordinary labs, one of those science labs. <laughs> <laughs> Where they do that their science in there, do they? <laughs> what are you doing there? Is that science? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> put, away the put away the test tube with the petri dishes. It's not could science. Have a, could have been a language lab. Yeah. It could have been. <laughs> that would have been great. If the, oh, the, ooh, oh, hello. Oh, it's foot and mouth disease and this. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of unruly individuals, by the way, who else is roaming free in the British countryside this week? Uh, my dad. Where are yeah. you, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Do you want to do a national plea? Yeah. Is it the asylum seekers who've broken out in Oxfordshire? It is. If there are 14 asylum seekers who've well, broken out. It's sad, you know, that they're, they're sort of like keeping these people under these horrible conditions and everything. What we should do, I mean, many of these people are legitimately seeking asylum, is have a ring of, say, like 100 police around the building and play British Bulldog. <laughs> You're British. British bulldog. I had a similar plan, right? I say that we allow fox hunting again, get the fox hunters to round them up, and the ones they catch, we deport. The ones that get away, we forgive them, give them a passport, they represent us in the Olympics. <laughs> I think the best way to find them would be to open a minicab office in Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> Arrest everyone who applies for the job. <laughs> A question. Yeah, As an Jimmy, American, Jimmy. how are these people get into the country? It's an island, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> there are many, but many how? points, ports of yeah. You know, it's in much it's in the same way that many immigrants here. get into America. You've, yeah. you've spotted them, I presume, wandering we around. Have. Uh, well, our, our son and I have taken way, just, very just, strong precautions. They built a, they're building a 700-mile fence across the border with Mexico. A couple of problems with the 700-mile fence. First problem is the border with Mexico is 1,900 miles long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an expert on immigration, but I would surmise that people fleeing abject poverty will go around the fence. <laughs> How is the U.S. presidential election shaping up? Shaping up wonderfully. <laughs> All of our candidates are fabulous. You're going to be happy no matter who we elect, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who's ever elected, they want to continue the policies in Iraq, they want to bring democracy to Iraq. And as you know, democracy is a very, very slippery slope. What happens if the people of Iraq start electing people that we don't like? <laughs> Well, what happens if they elect, you know, a religious fundamentalist? Or what happens if the people of Iraq elect somebody who doesn't know anything about world politics? Or what happens if they elect somebody who doesn't know anything about the Middle East? Or what happens if they elect somebody who's not intellectually qualified to be the president, <laughs> but might have a lot of business connections? Or, you know, family connections. <laughs> Maybe his father used to be the president. <laughs> no, I know that can never happen. That's a crazy dream. 
Uh, Tom Tancredo. Do you know Tom Tancredo? I heard of him, yes. Yeah, he's not that he would be, yeah. Tom Tancredo is a Republican candidate who said on a radio uh, that he would be prepared, if there was an attack on the US, oh, yeah, to yeah. bomb Mecca. You know? Which... <laughs> then, he said, then he said afterwards, in his own defence, that he was basically just thinking aloud. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sort of thinking aloud. You've really got to wean yourself off if you're going to be a politician. <laughs> maybe, maybe we've misunderstood. Oh, it was just an idea. I mean, forget it. it Let's is... not then, actually. <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird view of the Muslim faith, yeah. as if, like, it's Independence Day. If you take out the mothership somehow, <laughs> without that radio control that it has, they all go, oh, and they'll just turn Why back into it. it. So, well, maybe you've got it totally wrong. He just hates bingo. <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and the points are going to Russell, David and Andy! <laughs> I thought we were going to get the points down. The next round is called Between the Lines and it features Hugh and Frankie. Would you make your way to the press pit, please? Frankie delivers a speech in the guise of a leading figure on the world stage, while Hugh translates what they really mean. Frankie, this week, you are leader of the opposition, David Cameron, addressing the nation. Let me assure you, I understand the pain of the people of Tewkesbury. We're both up to our necks in shit. <laughs> this summer, I have put the Tory party back where they belong. Third in two by-elections. <laughs> I have been criticised recently for my poor performances. I told the wife it's the stress of the job. <laughs> I'm not worried about the polls. They're doing a lovely <laughs> job in my kitchen. <laughs> We Tories believe that marriage is the ideal. A strong man and a woman who will stand by him during allegations about his homosexuality. <laughs> Boris Johnson will make a great mayor. He has a lot in common with London's first mayor. He's a dick. <laughs> I have taken steps to ensure that I will be the next Prime Minister of this great country. Dear Jimmy, Don't you fix it for me. Let's <laughs> <laughs> here in Frankie. <laughs> now we play a round called Joko Ono. This game... <laughs> ...involved Jimmy, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. <laughs> this is where we test our performer's stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners of the team, I judge, will produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel for the first topic. The first topic is transport. Russell's straight in. Hello. Um, I had a car crash the other day. Um, it was horrific. I hit this lady. Uh, she was in a car. She wasn't dressed as a bollard. <laughs> um, it was so bad because I hit her, and then I sort of walked out to say sorry. And how unlucky is this? She was staring at me with real fear. For some reason, that morning, I decided to wear a Grand Theft Auto T-shirt. Now... <laughs> There's no way you can make that worse unless you've got a beer in one hand going, not again. I have, <laughs> I've really got to buy a steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is the Olympics. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. Yeah! <laughs> How crap is that logo? <laughs> That's all I've got on that one. <laughs> £400,000 that cost us. You could just have got some small kid to puke up some sunny delight on a jigsaw puzzle and you'd have got that for free. <laughs> the logo I want to see is a council taxpayer being shafted by a massive Olympic dick <laughs> which has been pierced by the five Olympic rings. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Jimmy and Frankie. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is air travel. Who wants to come in on that? Jimmy. <laughs> so, folks, our government is now talking about giving the pilots guns on the plane. I honestly think somebody in the plane should have a gun. I don't think the pilot is the person that should have the gun. <laughs> they already have a very important job. <laughs> 
If they all of a sudden have to be involved in gunplay, <laughs> who's flying the plane? Get back in your seat. Get back in your seat. Don't make me go back there. You son of a bitch. Hold the wheel. You. I said, put that tray table up. <laughs> Jimmy, take off. Okay, let's see who we've got left for Frankie. Let's spin the wheel again. And it's drinking. <laughs> As a teetotal alcoholic, that should be quite good. <laughs> I drink energy drinks now. It's good that they've finally managed to can anxiety. <laughs> It's good that there's a drink that gives me the resting heart rate of a serial killer <laughs> who's just spotted that there's a sale on at B&Q. <laughs> I hate this thing where Guinness always go, oh, we're the national drink of Ireland. Yeah, you're the national drink of a nation of alcoholics. <laughs> That's like saying that you're Gary Glitter's favourite search engine. <laughs> I'm teetotal, right? A concept which Scottish people don't understand. So I did a gig in Fife, and I was on stage, and this guy was going up to the bar, and he went, hey, I'll get you a drink as well. And I went, well, I, I used to be an alcoholic, so I don't drink anymore, but thanks anyway. And he looked at me for a bit, and then he went, a pint of lager shandy? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give it to Jimmy and Frankie. Oh. Yeah, really. OK, our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. David, which category would you like? Uh, science. OK, your category is science. The answer is serious, risky and heroic. So, what is the question? What is telling farmers, you know, it could be worse? <laughs> is it what are Snap, Crackle and Pop's DJ names? How have people described my recent sex tour of Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> Very well reviewed in The Spectator. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe standing in between Judy Finnegan and a free bar? Is it what are the three speed settings on the world's most powerful vibrator? <laughs> Do you know what the correct answer is? Oh, is, is it about the, um, the Russian submarine that's attempted to claim the North Pole? <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Well done, Frankie. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for is how did proud Russian officials describe their country's mission to claim the North Pole? This is the news that Russia has symbolically <laughs> staked a claim to billions of dollars worth of oil and gas reserves in the Arctic Oceans. Too many submarines carried out a record-breaking dive to plant a flag two and a half miles below the North Pole, which they believe is directly connected to their continental shelf, which, of course, it is, which is connected to every other part of the planet. Anyway. There's also a British flag two and a half miles underwater. It's on the top of Gloucester Cathedral. <laughs> I think you have Gloucester. I think you're allowed to yeah, mine yeah, Gloucester yeah. for oil. I think you're allowed to do that. I'm looking forward to seeing the Russian gangsters put the muscles onto the Eskimos, <laughs> then waking up with a seahorse's head in their bed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought when you said putting the muscles on the Eskimos, you meant sort of gluing crustaceans. <laughs> on... well, I suppose they'll get bored eventually. <laughs> <laughs> They're not crustaceans anyway, are they? They're mollusks. <laughs> it's, it's outrageous that they would go around and plant a flag and claim land that's not... Who do they think they are, the British? <laughs> <laughs> the Americans own this... the moon, of course, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> this is a shot of the flag-planting ceremony, two and a half miles down, taken from Russian state television. They could have mucked that up in an airing cupboard with a big yeah, pancake. <laughs> How would it be if the Russians are swimming away and they get motors about a mile away and they, uh, just a mermaid appears and snaps it and just goes like that? <laughs> I mean, it's fairly unlikely, but it'd be magic, wouldn't it? They're two and a half miles down. Yeah. They didn't just go... <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, my big metal arm will hopefully drag me down yeah. to the bottom. Unfortunately, yes, I've got swimming bronze. This should be no yeah. trouble. <laughs> I think if you have oil rig workers at the North Pole, you're going to have, like, an infrastructure spring up as well. That's going to be, like, the bleakest teddy bar in human history. <laughs> if, if after every dance, they have to get the girl off the pole with welding gear. <laughs> 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 
Canadian yeah. Foreign Minister said this isn't the 15th century, you can't go around the world and just plant flags and say we're claiming this territory. But no, actually, under international rule, the law of Bagsy is <laughs> the number one law. That, and if they'd gone up and licked it, then <laughs> nobody wants it there. <laughs> By that logic, it should belong to America, because apparently there was already a Starbucks down there. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you get your swimmer guy who swam there a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Why didn't he just carry a flag in his teeth and just, like, skip to the other side and go, dunk? Oh, by the way, ours. Uh... <laughs> he was too busy raising money for cancer, this selfish bastard. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe you're taking the moral yeah. high ground, are you? <laughs> He was that, he was <laughs> a while. <laughs> God, it looks strange up here. <laughs> he was looking for dizzy now and rolled down yeah. the moral hill. Uh, <laughs> but the Americans haven't actually come out and criticised the Russians, have they? No, they haven't. Mainly because no. Bush, he'd love to do it himself, wouldn't he? He would love to invade the Arctic, but he'd probably muck that up as well, wouldn't he? We'd have some sort of, you know, polar bear mutiny. We'd have suicide pingu on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> I trust that's accurate. Uh... <laughs> Very really accurate. Aren't you? <laughs> okay. We're sort of still virtually at war with Russia because of the Litvinenko thing, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. think the the really tragic thing about Litvinenko was that he actually looked better bald. <laughs> I mean, what a terrible way to find your perfect look. <laughs> he's, he's still very much respected in Britain, though. If you go to his grave, there's no weeds in the grave. <laughs> there's no plant life for miles around. <laughs> just, just the bodies of little woodland creatures that just <laughs> died from sadness, darling. <laughs> Do you miss the moral high ground? That was a while ago now, wasn't it? <laughs> Cold and dark down here, darling. <laughs> Just see the edges of your faces. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, the government disclosed figures on which supernatural phenomenon in Britain? UFOs. UFOs, UFOs yeah. UFOs. Or claimed sightings of UFOs. Not actually, you know, yeah. there have been 12 UFOs. <laughs> How come even as mobile phone cameras and stuff get better, you never still get a good picture of a, a UFO? It yeah. still always looks like a blurry shot of a Frey Bentos pie tin being thrown <laughs> over. <laughs> There was, a, uh, there was a couple in Hastings who said they saw an alien looking in their kitchen window. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that was just sweet, yeah, you know? was, Don't mind was... me, I'm the predator. Uh, <laughs> but the <laughs> azaleas are particularly impressive at this time of they year. They said that the alien changed from red to yellow to green. Are you sure they don't just live beside a traffic light? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, most UFO sightings are <laughs> after the pubs have closed <laughs> or, yeah. or on November the 5th. <laughs> Apparently, there's also lots of sightings round airports. Surprise, surprise. Yes, yeah. There's, a, ooh, there's a UFO taking off and a UFO landing. <laughs> oh, look, there's an orange UFO with an easy UFO <laughs> on the side <laughs> and a little website that you can contact. There's <laughs> also a very high percentage of sightings by lunatics as well. <laughs> sort of statistical anomaly. Apparently, for those people who have had alien abduction occur to them, apparently it's a fairly, you know, standard thing that happens. They get taken up by a beam of light. Like the story always says, yep. then they get a medical examination, and then before they're beamed back down, they're given a little guided tour of the spaceship, as if the aliens are going to go, well, we've got all the information we need. Would you like a look round? <laughs> this is my bedroom. Yes. And they go, perhaps you'd like some documentary evidence to take and show to your leader. No, it'll be fine. Yeah. I, sense, I sense I will be believed on this one. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to Russell, David and Andy! <laughs> now we come to our final quick-fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could all make your way over to the performance area, please. <laughs> I called ideas for scenarios we'd love to see in the performance come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject tonight is... The worst thing to hear on holiday. Many of you in this safari will be wondering why I'm sprinkling you with a barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Butlins. <laughs> the plane has lost all power. Feel free to use your cell phone. <laughs> Let me feel your arm. Let me see your teeth. Take him. <laughs> Hello? 
This is your captain speaking. <laughs> We're up. <laughs> you want a double or a single room? Double? Hmm. Ramon, build a double. <laughs> In the event of the cabin decompressing, oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling and dangle in front of your blue dead faces. <laughs> from your bedroom window, you have a lovely view of the town's ageing nuclear facility. <laughs> yes, I know you've got a restraining order out on me, but I, I don't think it applies abroad. <laughs> There's a bar in the swimming pool. After yesterday's riot. <laughs> <laughs> you must be the only person in the hotel who isn't going to the Star Trek convention. <laughs> Both of you, welcome to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines to hear in a TV show. On Sean the Sheep this week, Sean has a big surprise when a nasty DEFRA man comes round with a <laughs> bolt gun. <laughs> so get dialing, because remember, those phone lines close at midnight. Yesterday. <laughs> and now the Antiques Roadshow. This programme contains scenes of tedious dullness right from the start. <laughs> And if you have an opinion on this news story, why not keep it to yourself? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Mock the Week After Dark. I'm Dar O'Brien, and this is my penis. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Location, 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 Mohammed is looking for a pied de terre within easy reach of an international airport. <laughs> <laughs> and now over to Kate Humble, who's going to kick the face off a badger. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to India with Sanjeev Baskar and me, Jade Goody. <laughs> It's Shostakovich week on ITV1. <laughs> <laughs> on this week's Time Team, Tony Robinson goes round to Fred West's old house. <laughs> <laughs> well, now over to Sean for a blind stab at the weather. <laughs> <laughs> no deal, Edmunds! You're going to give me the money or I'm going to start shooting! <laughs> well done. the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, David Mitchell and Russell Howard. Commiserations to Frankie Boy, Hugh Dez and Jimmy Dingo. Thank you for watching. I'm Darby. See you next week. Good night. Thursday night comedy continues with Hyperdrive next here on BBC Two, consumer power on display to defend the local shop in Still Game at 10, and Russell Howard has his own radio show every Sunday morning from 10 on BBC Six Music. <laughs>